it's Metal Month at ToonTrack.com. Not only do they release a bunch of cool new metal-themed products every November, but they put out a bunch of cool free content just like this video. So head over to ToonTrack.com and get your fill. Today, we're going to talk about the Power Hand in Easy Drummer 3, which is the exact same thing in Superior, in case you Superior Drummer users want to follow along. Now, the Power Hand is the drummer's dominant hand, and it usually plays the most consistent sequence of notes that drives the beat. It dictates the flow. That's how important it is, so definitely lean in for this one. And if after this video you want to talk about the power hand to people outside of a tune tracking environment, call it the leading hand, because the power hand and tune track and the leading hand in the real world share almost identical definitions. Let's get started. I'm in Easy Drummer 3, the core product. I have the Bright Room library loaded up, and I'm using the Prog Metal Drums and Mixer preset. It has a brutal kick and snare combination. I love it. Let's move over to the Grooves tab. Here is where all your Easy Drummer 3 MIDI is stored, and thousands of MIDI grooves are included with Easy Drummer 3. So, more importantly, here's where you can sort all that MIDI. And depending on how many Easy X's or MIDI packs you own, you might see more or less filter keywords up here and more or less MIDI down here in the search results area. First thing I like to do if I'm looking for inspiration is I'll select this original tempo button. That means when I hit play on a groove, I'll hear it at its intended tempo, not at the project tempo, okay? It's pretty helpful. But let's focus on these columns because this is how we sort the MIDI. And let's start with the first column, which is genre. It is metal month, so let's choose metal. And let's skip a few for the sake of this tutorial. I want to select the 4-4 time signature because I just want to keep those heads steadily banging through my song. And look over here. The power hand has its own column. That's how important the power hand is. Remember, it's the dominant hand of the drummer. It plays the most consistent sequence of notes. And this decides what instrument on the drum kit it actually plays. Do you want to play the china, the crash, the hi-hat, and so on? I'm going to start with open hi-hat because that's just a good place for me to throw on a guitar and start riffing out. So down here, we should have metal drum beats in 4-4 with the open hi-hat. So let's just check this out. Sounds pretty metal to me, right? I'm more into that right now. So let me just grab this and drag it down to the song track. Let's do this one more time and just find one more beat so we have some contrast to work with. So I want to change the power hand, so I'll just go up to the power hand column and I'll hit this little orange button, which will clear my power hand filters. Let me start from scratch. And this time I want more of a breakdown feel. Um, I'm thinking like a, a china or a crash, just psh, 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 instead of like a something more fluid like t -t -t -t, right? So I'm going to select China. Yeah, uh, no, I'm going to select Crash. I have not yet sold my soul completely to metal music. So I'll select Crash. And here's one thing is I want to make sure that that crash is hitting where I count. One, two, three, four. I want it real rigid. Now here's a power tip. You can right click in this header area up here and you can reveal a small menu, and you'll notice that we're not even seeing all of the columns, and I want the resolution column, so I'll click on it. And here we see resolution. Now, this will help dictate the, the note duration that the power hand plays. That's a super power tip right there, and I wanted to count the four, so I want quarter notes. Now, let's see what we have going here. It's not what I'm looking for. There it is. Perfect. And it kind of has like those little double kick sequences bouncing around. It's similar to this riff. I think this is perfect. If you're not yet using the grooves tab in that manner, you might be driving over speed bumps that you don't even know are there. So consider the workflow I just showed you in that last section and let's move on to the groove parts menu. Let's say you chose a groove you'd like, but maybe the power hand needs something different. We're going to use the groove parts menu to steal elements of grooves that are in your search results area, and we're going to steal them and we're going to swap them out with grooves you already selected. It's a pretty cool trick. Now, in this case, let me deselect original tempo so we're not hearing the tempo that these beats were recorded at anymore. Now we're hearing them at the project tempo. And let me just decide what I want to do. Let's hear this first beat we chose. 
a pretty strong power hand. It's just counting chord notes. One, two, three, four. Maybe I want to get more of a pocket. Maybe I want eighth notes. I want the power hand to play twice as much. Ba, 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 instead of ba, 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 okay? Now, I'm working with hi-hats, so let's remove the crash. And let's go back to open hi-hats. And now this resolution menu, if you heard me correctly before, it doesn't dictate exactly what the power hand does, but it does help, okay? So let's reset this. I want eighth notes instead of quarter notes because I want that power hand to be twice as fast as what we heard, okay? Now let's hear what's going on. That's definitely an eighth note hi-hat. Ba, 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 instead of ba, 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 okay? Now what do we do? Let's go over to the Groove Parts menu. It's, it's so small over there, yet so powerful. So let's not forget it's here. I'll click it. And what this is doing is it's saying, hey, here are all the different elements in the groove you have selected in your search results area. So if I hit play here, we're hearing all the elements. Now we're just hearing the kick. It really helps you focus. Now we're just hearing the snare, all right? We're talking about hi-hats. So if you select hi-hat over there, which it conveniently tells you this is the power hand, it really helps you lean in and focus on it. It's a, it's a really fantastic tool. Now if I grab this and bring it to the song track, it'll just be a MIDI file or a groove of only hi-hat, right? Here, let's check that out. See? Let me undo that. But here's the cool thing. If you grab just the hi-hat portion of this groove, and drag it over another groove, watch the icon change. See that little icon? You can drag it over just parts of a groove. The second half, I'm gonna drag it over the entire thing and I'll release in three, two, one. Now we overwrote our original power hand with the power hand we stole from this beat up here in the search results area. Now let's listen. Here we go, it's a different feel. And now we're really going to get some contrast going into this part. Yeah. That's how you steal Groove Parts with the Groove Parts menu. The Groove Parts menu, that will help you stay out of the grid editor if you don't like that type of labor. But if you're new to the grid editor, check out these next few minutes and I might actually be able to get you comfortable with it. Let's keep working on this beat we've been focusing on. I'm going to loop it. I'm going to hit play. Let me just zoom in so we can see what's going on here. We're focusing on the power hand. In this beat, it happens to be the hi-hat. So I want to select this hi-hat lane in three, two, one. Now all the hi-hat dots, they're called diamonds, I call them dots, are selected, every single one of them. If I want to change the power hand, I can just click and drag them now that they're selected to a different power hand instrument. A ride is another common power hand instrument. Maybe it's an intro of the song, maybe it's a breakdown or even a verse. You could bring it down to a tom. You could do it on a crash. These are the most popular power hands. Let me bring it back up to the ride. And if you're using a mouse that has super high sensitivity or maybe you're on a trackpad and when you drag stuff around it goes everywhere, try this. Control up and down arrow on PC to move stuff around. Or on a Mac, that's option, okay? Let's stick with the ride for a minute. Now, let's say I like this new power hand, which is the ride, but it's playing too much. I wanna play it half as much. Kind of the reverse of what we did in the previous part of this video. I can go up to the notes menu, and I can go down to stretch notes, half tempo. Let's half time feel the ride in three, two, one. Super power tip right there. And now, let's not fear the reaper here. It did work generally, but there's a little bit of editing to do, no problem. Right now we have a ride playing over our drum fill. Now I have the arrow tool selected, that's fine. You just draw over the notes I wanna get rid of. It's good tips for things to watch out for when you're quality controlling your beats, all right? That drummer's hands are busy with the fill. He shouldn't be playing that ride. I'll hit delete. And lastly, what do I see? There's a missing ride right here, okay? So I'll grab the pencil tool. I'll just color it in. We changed our power hand and the feel of the power hand 
in just a few seconds. What's just as important as getting all those dots exactly where you want them in the grid editor is the velocity of those dots, how hard they're hitting. So let's find the velocity lane. And if you're having any issues with this, I do have a grid editor course. The link is down in the description. So here's the beat we just completed. And I want to introduce you to the velocity lane down here. And if you don't see it, it might be collapsed. Here it says velocity, usually by default. Select this arrow next to it and it pops open that velocity lane. And you can kind of mouse over in this area and drag it up so we can really focus on it, okay? I want you to focus on this ride power hand and I want you to notice that some of these dots, they're not the same shade of white. Some of them are more gray. So we have a solid white, pretty solid white, and then a gray. And you can kind of start seeing patterns like this, all right? And it's really, it's a good tip to notice the shades of gray, okay, uh, biohazard. And if I go down here, I'll notice what reacts to these shades of gray are, are how tall these stems are with the lollipop on top. Those are my terms, not official terms. So these stems are going up super high and they're super white, and these stems aren't going up super high, so they're kind of gray. That's how hard the drummer's hitting. That is velocity, okay? And I kind of see a pattern here. Let's ignore this one, because that's the dot I manually added, okay? But look, strong, weak, kind of strong, weak, strong, weak, kind of strong, weak, okay? So if I grab this first lollipop, which is louder than all of them, and I bring it down to something like this, now we're gonna hear a more consistent pocket to that note I added. Let's use a different example real quick. I'll go to the Grooves tab. I'm gonna hit my Clear All Chip, which will completely reset my entire Grooves tab. And let's just listen to this first beat. This is a perfect example to work with. I'll drag it to the song track. Quick way to get to the grid editor is to double click your groove in three, two, one. Now we see the groove in the grid editor that I have highlighted in the song track, okay? I'm gonna click my hi-hat icon. Now we see the power hand and look at the peaks and valleys, pretty consistent, similar to how a human drummer would have a good pocket, all right? We see some non-consistent parts, but that's a beautiful thing. We don't want it to sound like a drum machine, all right? Let's listen to this, but specifically listen to the hi-hat. And here's a power tip. If you're focusing on the power hand, you can solo it, okay? Here we go. Solo it. Pretty cool, huh? Let me loop this beat so we don't go off the screen. Now, let's talk about peaks and valleys real quick. Here are the peaks, here are the valleys. Now, the further away the peak is from the valley, that's dynamics, that's a highly dynamic performance, okay? And in metal, sure, we hear beats like this, it depends on what the composer wants, but a lot of time when we wanna drive with metal, really push through, we want less dynamics so it hits harder. So to take the dynamics out of this hi-hat beat, I'll grab the dynamic slider and I'll move it left and watch the peaks get closer to the valleys. Here we go in three, two, one. All right, now let's listen to this beat. The pocket is leaving and now we're driving and we're pushing harder, okay? And I could do the opposite. I could move the dynamic slider in the opposite direction and get more dynamics, more of a pocket and separate them even more. Can barely hear these valleys. So do what you wish. It's a really great slider. I'm gonna do the opposite because it's metal month and I really wanna like beat people with a baseball bat with my music, of course. And let's get these closer together. Good, and I don't wanna flatten it out like this because I don't want it to sound like a drum machine, so be careful, unless you're doing EDM music or something. Yeah, I like this. But now that I've eaten evened out the dynamics, what if they're still not hitting hard enough? Great, that's what the velocity slider is for. Now that my peaks and valleys are generally where I want them, but I want the drummer to hit harder, now I just push the velocity up. Yeah, and now we're pushing. And let's say this is metal. Maybe all of these should be more open hi-hat. Remember, I have my 
hi-hat lane selected so all the dots are selected so I can just move them down to an open version of a hi-hat. I'm going to feed bandmate some dinner real quick. There's very little to keep in mind when it comes to the power hand and bandmate, but let's leave no stone unturned. Make sure you're optimizing your bandmate experience. I decided to load up one of the more recent metal themed easy X's. This is metal mania with the MK one preset over here on bandmate. We have that guitar riff I just recorded and bandmate just throws a quick groove at it and syncs it up so we can just hit play. Ooh, all right. Not exactly metal month though. So you can see it says pop rock country. That's not what we're looking for. If you look at this little dark brown square area, that's where you can choose and manipulate your search results. This is like a miniature version of the grooves tab, except there's not as many columns of filters to choose from and you don't get as many results. So you really got to focus on making your selections here. If you look at where it says filters, there's a tiny drop down. That's your filters menu. And look, the power hand is still there. That's how important it is. So if I wanted to open hi-hat groove, I'll select that, or let's just select ride right now. And now that we only have ride grooves coming back in our results, we select our genre, which is metal. Now this selection is all metal beats. And you'll see like uh, different breakdowns depending on what you choose, okay? So let's just select ride. Now this ride A beat is loaded in. I can just hit play. That works just fine. I just selected a different one, a bit more busy. Cool. Let's just choose this one because it's pretty basic and we can talk about it. I can adjust the amount of snares and the amount of kick drums in this beat. That's for another day. Look, this last knob right here that's for your power hand if the hi-hat was the power hand you would see a hi-hat here but the ride is the power hand and we see a ride so we can take away the amount of hits the ride makes i just half timed the ride very convenient where we could do the opposite move we can push it up now we hear a lot of rides look there's even a little oh that was cool did you hear that that's how you optimize bandmate. It's a must. Speaking of that amount knob and bandmate that we just covered, edit playstyle has the same thing except way more. And edit playstyle can also keep you out of the grid editor if that's what you need. Let's check it out. Here's that groove that we got in bandmate. I'll drag it to the song track. I'll loop it. Make sure it's selected and then hit the edit playstyle button. Now we have the edit play style interface. I love this place. And notice the power hand icon right here is hovering over the ride. That's our power hand. I'll hit play. The key here is you just drag this around to whatever instrument on the drum kit you want. So let's say we want hi-hats instead. It's that easy to change your power hand without the grid editor. It's fantastic. You can also grab this little drop down menu right here. And I want more open hi-hats. This is metal. I want it to drive more, be more aggressive. Let's choose open edge too. Pretty awesome. Now I hear some extra hits in there that I didn't really like. That amount knobs right here. I can peel it back. It'll probably eliminate those. Actually, it just gave me a pretty strong straight feel right there. That's awesome. So this amount knob can go up for more hi-hats or down for less hi-hats. And I happen to hit the sweet spot right out of the gate. So I'm going to leave it there. Also, let's just drag this over to the tom before we continue. Pretty awesome, right? Let's change the amount knob. Let's see if we can get that little fill back. Actually, it sounds pretty good. This little accents on the up I don't want. I'll peel it back. I can also change the velocity, how hard the drummer's hitting that tom. So let's have them hit it a little harder if there's any velocity left to hit with. Oh yeah. Or we could have them hit quieter. Super powerful to control the power hand and edit play style. I hope by now you're acknowledging how important the power hand is. Or if we're already on the same page with that, maybe you learned a couple tricks today. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for hundreds of free videos just like this one, plus complete courses. And check out tunetrack.com. Not only do they have a bunch of new metal theme products this November, they have a bunch of cool content just like this video. I'll see you over there.